Hi, I'm Brian Hayes. I'm a Salesforce and Pardot consultant with Rotiv. We're an official Salesforce partner, and we teach small businesses how to automate their processes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pass the record ID of a record you're looking at into a flow. We'll look at a screen flow that's embedded on that record, as well as a screen flow that's triggered through a button. You'll see in a minute that it's pretty straightforward to pass that record ID into a screen flow that's actually located on a page, but it can be a little bit tricky if you don't know where to look, if you're trying to pass that record ID into a flow from a button. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is create a screen flow. To do that, go into Salesforce setup and search for flow. Under the flows menu, click new flow, and we're gonna select screen flow. Now, if you were creating a record triggered flow, this really wouldn't be necessary because record triggered flows already capture the ID of the record that triggered that automation. Screen flows though, don't necessarily need to run associated with a record. Um, they can though. And when they do, then you certainly wanna pass that record ID into them so that they're running in context. So once we have that flow created, what we're gonna do is create a resource to store the record ID. On the left-hand side, go ahead and click on new resource. And you've got a few different options here. Well, in our case, we want this resource to be a variable because it's gonna be different depending on what record you trigger this automation from. So we'll select variable. And then for the API name, go ahead and use lowercase record, capital I, lowercase d. And this is a special variable name if you're using a variable on a screen flow, we could actually name this anything. We could say the opportunity ID or a specific record ID and put anything we want in here because you'll see when we add the screen flow to a page, you can, you can choose where that record ID gets added. But if we're gonna trigger this from a button, we need to use the specific naming record ID. That's how the system knows to pass that ID from the record through the button into the flow. Under data type, go ahead and choose text, and then make sure that available for input is checked. This is what makes it possible for data to come from outside the flow into the flow. And that's what we need in order to capture that record ID. Click done. And now everything else is optional and everything else is gonna be different depending on what you want your flow to do. In our case though, I'm just gonna create a screen to prove that it's working. So I'm gonna give this screen a label. I'm just gonna call it saved record ID and flow. And then instead of putting an input on a on the screen like you typically would do, I'll add some display text. That way we can check to make sure that the that the automation has in fact captured our record ID. So right on the right hand side here, I can put whatever I'd like. I'm gonna put your record ID is, and then a colon, and then we can insert a resource. It's gonna drop a variable for the variable we just created. So whatever gets saved in that record ID variable, it's going to show up here. So if it's blank, we know that it didn't get saved or something went wrong. And if it works, we can see exactly what that value is to compare it to the record that we started this automation from. Go ahead and click save and activate. Once this flow has been activated, you'll then find it available in your lightning record pages to embed directly on a record. I'm gonna bring up a account record, but you could do this with any sort of object, it doesn't matter. So we'll take a look at the Blouse Barn account here. And then in the upper right-hand corner, I'm gonna click on Edit Page, and this will take us into the Lightning App Builder. On the left-hand side, there's a component for flows. So I drag that onto the page, and once that's dragged onto the page, you can choose which flow you wanna use. Any of your activated screen flows are going to be available here. And you can see save record ID example is available on the right. Now here's what's pretty easy. Once you add this to the screen underneath it is any variable that we've made available for input. And right underneath that is a little checkbox that says pass record ID into this variable. So it really takes care of it for you. As long as you check that box underneath the record ID variable or whatever you happen to name it, it's going to pass this particular account record ID into that flow. Go ahead and hit save and the back button here. Now you can see our record page has loaded, our screen flow has started, and it's captured that record ID right here and displayed it for us in the, in the display text. Now, if I compare that ID to the URL, they should be exactly the same. You can see here after the account, we've got this ID ending in 07AAC. 
same one we're seeing right here. So now we've got that record ID in the flow. You can do all sorts of things with it. We can get all the contacts related to that account or all the opportunities or anything else along those lines. Now, let's say though, we wanted to launch this flow, not from the screen component, but from a button instead. Well, to do that, we first need to create the action. So I'm going to go into the object manager and pull up the account object. Then under buttons, links, and actions, create a new one. And this new action is going to be of the action type flow. And then you can choose save record ID example. You can then put whatever label you'd like into this button. And that name is going to automatically fill based off the label. Hit save. Then we can add this button to the account page layout. Under lightning actions, you'll find the name of that action or that button, and you can drag it onto the page layout. Go ahead and refresh your account record. And then you'll see that new button shows up in the upper right-hand corner. So what's my record ID? When I click on that, it then shows me the same thing here. And the reason it knows this now, we didn't tell that button where it should save the ID of this record. Like we did when you added it to the lightning page, it had to assume and figure out for itself where it should save that ID. And so that's the key of naming that variable that's available for input by naming it record ID. Salesforce knows that that's where it should save the record ID for that automation. If we had named it anything else, this wouldn't have worked. So let's say, for example, we change the name of this variable from record ID to the one and only record ID. Let's activate that new version and then we'll see what happens. Well, for one thing, we're going to need to update the uh, embedded screen flow on the page. But now if we click that button, it says your record ID is blank. So we didn't know just to choose any variable that happens to be available for input. It's only going to save that ID if the variable is named record ID. A little tricky, but once you know that, it's not too hard to solve. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please hit like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.